Many reactions we deal with in organic chemistry often have us having alkenes as being our reactants, meaning what we start with. Now, one of the first reactions we, we study involving alkenes are what known as a uh, hydrogen halide addition to an alkene. So what does that involve? Well, the first thing we have is an alkene, which is any carbon compound which contains a double bond between two carbons. So let's say our alkene in this case is propene in which we have a three carbon chain with a double bond between the first and second carbons. Now in this reaction we also have to have a uh, hydrogen halide which is essentially just a hydrogen bond to any halide so let's say our halide in this case will be Cl. Now what can happen between these two molecules? Well, let's first study the physical properties of both of them and see what we can have. So let's first talk about the alkene. We know that in, alkene, in an alkene we have a double bond, and in a double bond we have two overlapping p orbitals from both atoms. So here we have two carbon atoms here, and these two lines represent the p orbitals, and then this arch over both lines represents the overlapping p orbitals. Therefore, we see that we can have electron density both above and below the alkene, or the double bond. So let's draw that in our picture. Now what about the hydrogen halide? We know that Cl, or any halide, is much more electronegative than hydrogen is. Therefore, the electrons in the bond between the hydrogen and the chlorine, or the halide, would, would much rather prefer to stay closer towards the halide. Therefore, we would have a partial negative charge on the halide, and a partial positive on the hydrogen. Now we can sort of see what would happen between these two molecules. We can essentially have either side of the double bond attack the hydrogen and then the electrons used in bonding between the hydrogen and the halide go completely towards the halide. So the intermediate in this reaction would simply be this. In which you have a proton partially bonded between both carbons from the double bond and you have the anion, the Cl minus, or the anion, the halide, resulting from the electrons, the both electrons from the H and the halide bond going towards the halide. Now, here we encounter a problem. This intermediate here is obviously very unstable. Therefore, we must have the proton attack one of these carbons. The thing is, we don't know which one. Therefore, we have to use something known as the Markovnikov's rule, which states that the positive reactant, the positive part of the reactant, in this case, um, the H, would bond to the carbon, which forms the more stable intermediate, the more stable carbocation intermediate. So let's test it out. Let's say we let's have two different cases in which we have one case having the proton bond to the left carbon, and the other case in which we have the proton bond to the right carbon, and see which one forms a more stable carbocation. So the first case we have is if we have the proton bond to the left one. So what we get is we'd have the left carbon with one methyl group and two hydrogens, and the right carbon simply just having two hydrogens. And then we notice here that because this carbon here only has three valence electrons, it must have a formal charge of plus one, which we draw. Now what about if we have the proton attack the right carbon? What do we have? Well, the red carbon would have three hydrogens attached to it, while the left carbon would have a methyl group and one hydrogen. And therefore, again, because it only has three valence electrons, it has a formal charge of plus one on that carbon. Now, which one of these is more stable? Because the reason why we want a more stable intermediate is because the more stable intermediate can last longer, therefore it can react further, while the less stable intermediate would, would, would much rather prefer to go back to its reactant form, forming no product. So if we notice here, we notice that we have a primary carbocation, meaning the positive charge is on a carbon which is only attached to one other carbon. So let's write primary here. But over here, we notice that the positive charge is on a carbon which is attached to two other carbons, making it a secondary carbocation. So let's write secondary. 
So we know from like hyperconjugation and the previous rules we've learned that we know that we have a secondary carbocation being much more stable than a primary carbocation. Therefore, the reaction would would much rather have this be the intermediate as opposed to this. So since we form none of this intermediate, essentially all of this intermediate goes to the second intermediate. So let's draw the final step in this reaction in which we have this intermediate react with the anion, the Cl minus. So our intermediate from before was this. And we had a formal charge of plus one on this carbon. And we also have the Cl minus from the first step. So obviously we can have, because it's a trigonal planar, it only has three things attached to it, we can have the chlorine either attack from the top side or the bottom side, but not both. Now this is kind of an important step to remember because in many of the reactions we have, we can form two enantiomers, meaning two uh, two molecules which are non-superimposable mirror images of each other, therefore they must be different molecules. But however, in this case, because we have two identical groups here on this carbon, we have two methyl groups, we don't form an an any enantiomers. So all we, would, all we would have to draw for the product would be this. And that's all we have. 